I'm going to be talking about uh, workload placement. And when we talk about a workload, we're really talking about a set of virtual machines, a set of data center resources, and a set of network resources associated with those, or network demands associated with those, and trying to work out where we should place a particular workload on the network. Okay, so that's really going to be the focus of, focus of this, uh, this talk. And we're going to um, use a couple of products in order to give us an intelligent decision on workload placement. And we'll talk about how you bind those, how you bind those things together. So to provide a bit of context, um, prior, to, prior to the broad uh, availability of cloud services, if you wanted to deploy any type of service, typically it was fairly slow provisioning times. If you wanted to deploy an internet access service, it was a time to provision an access link, it was a time to provision the CPE, and those things take you know, days or, or even weeks, and that gives you time to build out capacity to support those new services. So effectively, you know, what's, what's happened with slow speed provisioning is that you've got lots of time in order to ensure that your core or your network capacity can support the services you're deploying. Now, as we roll out cloud services, and, and anybody can go online and request dynamically a whole set of data and resources that can generate more traffic than certain parts of the network might be able to support. So we've got to, you know, in order to cope with that much faster speed of service provisioning, we've got to make sure that our capacity management processes are as quick. And that means both network capacity and it means data center capacity. Okay. So that's pretty much the context. And we're going to talk about how do we do that? How do we make capacity management across the network and the data center as fast as the speed of cloud service provisioning? So let's, let's define a problem statement. And um, this, is, this is one. We can define many in, in, in this same space. So I'm looking to, do, to, to sell a data center service. I've got a number of data centers spread across the US. Um, and for any particular request I get from a customer who's got a specific request for amount of data center resources and amount of network resources, how do I decide out of all of the data center locations I've got where I should put that service? That's, that's the problem that we're solving. Now, why are we, so, why are we trying to solve that problem? Well, if you make a bad decision, the impact on the end customer service can, can be significant. But also, it's not just the impact on the end customer service, the impact on your network and your data center can be significant because you end up making inefficient use of the underlying resources. Okay, so let's start with, um, let's start with what we know. So we're trying to place a workload, and that workload consists of a set of data center resources. So a number of vCPUs, an amount of memory, an amount of disk space, um, uh, perhaps at a certain tier, uh, 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 perhaps a set of, set of other affinity constraints that we might have for the data center resources. Then we've also got a network SLA, because if I'm going to place a workload which is supporting a particular application or a particular service, somebody's going to be accessing that. So where are they accessing it from, and how much bandwidth do I need to support them wherever they are? Um, and in addition, you know, I obviously know, so, so I obviously know where all my data centers are. And I should also know my available network, uh, my network, my network capacity. So how do we take all of that information in and actually use it to make an intelligent decision about where we should put things? Well, we, we're going to talk about how we do that and how we can use, uh, um, uh, how we can use the um, Cisco WAE and, and Caridon in combination in order to give you that answer. But what answer are we actually trying to get out of the system? Well, we're trying to do a few things. Firstly, we're trying to make sure that we've got available in, enough available data center resources um, and you know, enough future capacity to be able to scale with that demands of that workload if the demands go up over time. We want to make sure that we can guarantee the network SLA. So this means, this means two things. This means make sure that the latency for the service is within bounds. So if, if, for, my service, if for my voice service to work well, I want to keep my latency for, for, to, to my... Uh, uh, to my SBC down to less than 20 milliseconds, then you know that's that's my latency SLA that I want to enforce. Um, also, you know we want to make sure that you've got enough uh, enough capacity. I don't want to 
put this service out and as a result of putting this service there, I end up with congestion on the links uh, to that particular data center. But as well as meeting the SLA, I want to try and make effective use of the resources. So I want to try and ideally, if I can meet my SLA in several different places, I want to still be able to distribute my traffic around so that I'm going to make, uh, uh, e you know, e get an even distribution of traffic and make effective use of resources. If I put everything in the same place, I'm going to run out of resources there quickly, get congestion and not be able to support more services. So the net effect is twofold. Guarantee you can meet the SLA and make efficient use of resources which effectively minimizes your cost. So how, how do you do that today? Well, the answer is, in practice, you don't. So how would you pick your data center today? Well, perhaps you pick it based upon the closest. Okay, well, that might minimize your latency, but uh, it might not make effective use of your network resources. And if you're always picking your closest, maybe you're going to run out of data center capacity sooner. So, okay, well, well maybe, I, maybe I don't do that. Maybe I just, you know, I just pick where I want to put it. Well, again, if, you just, if you're just arbitrarily picking, how do you know you can meet your network, SLA uh, um, uh, your network SLA for latency? How do you know there's available capacity? And how do I know that in future in that data center I'm going to have available capacity to support the growth of that workload? And the answer is today, you know, you, you, you don't have that level of intelligence. So pretty much you're, you're making somewhat an arbitrary decision about where you place something, which perhaps doesn't really have the full understanding of the requirements of the workload, and you're hoping that's going to be sufficient. So, not the best strategy. How can we do better? Well, um, what we're going to demonstrate shortly is an integration between, uh, um, between Cisco WAE and, and server, which, which gives that answer. And the, the integration consists of several components. So firstly, you know, a, 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 a manager of the data center resources, okay, which has visibility of the underlying data center topology, so it understands, the, it, it understands the available capacity, the servers. It also understands the workloads running on those servers, and so it understands how much free space there is in order to support new service requests. Okay. So that's what is provided by, uh, that's what's provided by, functionality is provided by server in this, um, uh, in this demo. So secondly, on the network side, I need the same sort of capability. I need something that has visibility of the underlying network topology, understands where the bandwidth is, and it also understands the traffic on top of that topology, so it's able to understand where there's free capacity and where there's not. And that's what's provided by um, Cisco WAE. And then, for this particular demo, there's a piece of glue that sits in between the two of those. And that's what you'll see, uh, and that's what we'll take you through. And that, that, that bit of glue, which was developed by uh, Baton and Ryang, there we go, who are sitting here at the moment, and they're, they're happy to talk to you about that afterwards. That bit of glue um, is taking in a request, and the request consists of the amount of network resources that you want and the amount of data center resources that you want. It is putting out a qu query to a uh, server for the data center resources, understanding where is there available capacity and how much, and other metrics with which it uses to make a decision about where to place a service. It's also putting queries out to Karen, uh, sorry, to Cisco WAE, my heritage coming out there, um, which is, uh, uh, so it's putting queries out there to say, is there available capacity from here to this data center or from here to that data center? And it's using that information in order to, uh, uh, those, combining those two sets of information in order to make an intelligent decision. Didn't know he did that. Okay. Okay, so in terms of the inputs, several different inputs into the, into the application. So a set of policy inputs. So these are kind of the minimum requirements for the, for, for the, for the workload. So latency requirements, utilization requirements, and, and so requirements on the maximum cost that you're prepared for that particular service. Um, obviously the list of customers, the list of sites, so the list of sites that are accessing the service. And then um, uh, for, from the data center perspective, the, the specific resources required, the amount of vCPUs, the amount of memory, the amount of disk, from a network perspective, the amount of ca capacity. So they're the inputs and 
We put all those into the system and we'll go through the demo now and then you'll see hopefully how they produce an output. And actually I'll, let me clear that one out. Okay, so um, what you can see here, and I'll have to scroll down, but what you can see here is we've got an area here where we set our specification for our workload. So uh, we give it a name, number of vCPUs, memory, disk space, bandwidth to and from the data center. We're not saying which data center because this is going to tell us. Okay. Then we specify down here our traffic sources, which sites want to access this data center service. Okay. And um, although I'm showing you, you know, I'm showing you this via a web front end practice you might not use this via a web front end this is a bit of logic that could be in an orchestration system so when you go and request your virtual machine you don't say where you want it you say what what your requirements are for it and it's automatically placed for you or if you've got a some other virtualized function you're going online and requesting it you it trans entirely transparent to you could be the workings that we're effectively showing here so We've got a workload specification. We've got the sites that are going to be accessing the workload. And then if I go a bit lower down, we've got a set of policies that we're applying. So this is uh, maximum monthly cost of the data center resources. Um, uh, so this is in dollars. Um, then we've got something we, which is um, called the minimum number of slots. So a slot in this context is um, if the workload was, for example, a, a two by two virtual machine, so let's say you know, two vCPUs, two, two gigs of uh, RAM, then uh, that would represent a slot. And here, what it's showing is that the, um, this is a policy around the minimum number of slots free that you'd be happy uh, to have for the service to be placed. Because maybe if your capacity, available capacity gets really low, you don't want to stick the service there in the first place. Um, then we've got a maximum latency across the network that we're happy to support. Uh, a maximum path utilization, so um, uh, you, we might not want our utilization on any of the paths that the traffic is taking to this data center to exceed 90% or, or some threshold, um, because if it did, then we'd start to maybe, maybe see latency build up and may, maybe loss. And then lastly, we specify an optimization policy, and that says if I've got more than one site, more than one data center that can meet these requirements, how am I going to choose between, between them? So let's, let's stick some numbers in and then let's see the answer and then let's try and explain it. So, let's, uh, well, we're going to give it a name. Uh, number of vCPUs, I'll just, I'll just do uh, two, two gig of memory, uh, 500 gig of disk space, 100 meg upstream, 100 meg downstream, and I'm going to pick, um, just, just pick three sites. So in this case, these are three. These are three sites where we've where we've got um, uh, three sites on our network, from which they're going to be accessing the data center service. So effectively, what we're going to get is from from Atlanta, from Boston, and Chicago, you're going to have demands of 100 megabits per second accessing this particular data center service. Um, okay. So then I'm going to go down and specify my policy. Maximum monthly cost. I'll just put $100. Uh, minimum number of slots, I'll put two. Worst case latency, I'll put 30 milliseconds. So this is a, U, a model of the US. Um, uh, so 30 milliseconds is, you know, is, is pretty large. Um, worst case path utilization, I'm going to put 100%. And then in my policy here, I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to balance between uh, the network and the data center. I'm going to try and balance between both sets of resources. Okay. Now, there we go. If I submit, you'll see that we, we start to get some results. So let, let's explain what you can see in terms of the results. So what you've got here is a row for every data center. Okay? So we're effectively, we're showing you all the working. In, uh, um, we're, we're kind of lifting up the bonnet, if you like. And so if I take the first, the first line entry here, we've got Chicago as one of the sites in our model. And you can see that for this, for, to place that service in this site, the data center cost dollar cost of that infrastructure it's going on is $60. That's within our $100, $100 uh, uh, threshold we set, so it's green. Available slots. This is a measure of the available capacity in that data center. So you know, in this case, we've got 76 slots. That means we could have supported 76 instances of this workload we requested. Whereas if we go down here, you'll see some of these others. You know, We can only support 25 instances, 18 instances. That means there's less available capacity at those other data centers. Um, worst case latency, 21 milliseconds. That means 
from all of the sites that were accessing the service, so from Atlanta, Boston and Chicago to Chicago, the worst case latency across any of the network paths that would be used by the traffic is going to be 21 milliseconds. That's taking into account any failure cases we're modeling as well. So all of that modeling, all, all of that happened in the time that I did that query. Okay? So it's worked out all of the network paths from all of these sources to this destination, taking into account failure cases. Then we've got worst case path utilization, uh, in this case 84%. So again, worked out all of the paths the traffic will take, and then um, it knows how much traffic is already on the network, and it knows if, it, if we add this extra traffic, what the utilization across all those paths is gonna be. Taking into account failure cases as well if we, if we want it. And then last you'll see you know, this, the, a, a button that will be green or red. If it's green, that means it satisfied all our policies. Okay? So it's a valid choice, it meets our SLA requirement. If it's, uh, if it's red, that means it, it's violated one of our policies. So in practice, we've shown you all the working here, but based upon what I put in here, if you were going to automatically select one data center, you'd select Chicago, because it meets all of your SLA requirements, all of it meets your, it's got sufficient data center resources, sufficient network resources, and based upon our optimization policy, which was um, to balance network and data center resources, it was top of the list, so it, it, it was optimal. Now, if I click on some of these other uh, tabs, you can see which one we would pick taking into account another optimization policy. So maybe we want to, instead of um, balancing network and data center resources, maybe we want to minimize network latency. So what happens is we've now got exactly the same set of results reordered, reordered around that policy of minimizing latency. So there's my latency, and you'll see that here we've got uh, 19 milliseconds, 21, 23. So the lowest latency is at the top. But unfortunately, the one that's at the top violates our monthly cost. So we wouldn't pick that. We'd actually pick Chicago, uh, Chicago again, actually, uh, in this particular case. So you can see, you know, uh, uh, um, so, so Chicago has the lowest latency and is green for all of the other, um, green for all of the other measures. If I minimize on uh, monthly cost, you'll see, actually, um, uh, where are we? Mon if I minimize on, uh, minimize on cost, you'll see that the first three entries are low cost, but actually, they all violate my latency. So I wouldn't pick those. I'd pick the first one that's all green, which is, again, going to be Chicago. And then we've got a theme coming on here, haven't we? Um, consistent theme. I think Chicago looks like the right site on this one. Um, so again, minimize on slot. So this is minimizing the data center, minimizing the data center resources, or, or actually maximizing the amount of free space across the data center as a whole. So what this serves to do is to balance your data center usage around your data centers. And you can see here, she, she, um, Seattle comes out top, most available capacity. Um, San Jose second, both violate my latency. So um, good old Chicago um, comes out, comes out top again. Network utilization. Let's see. There we go. So um, what this last policy network utilization, what we're doing is we're trying to minimize the overall network utilization. And that serves to squeeze more traffic on the same infrastructure. It actually gives us a bandwidth gain. And you can see in this case that uh, my uh, worst case path utilization was 84%. In fact, it's 84% for a good chunk of these. So um, Chicago or, or Washington DC actually have the same number here. Um, we've preferred Chicago because we've secondarily tried to minimize the latency, um, which is why that one comes out as top. Okay, and now if I, uh, so Chicago seems like the choice. If I, um, uh, if I pick Chicago, I route it, which means I've accepted the reservation for Chicago. That's the one I picked, it was best for my criteria. So now I've got this, uh, I've got this reservation, in, uh, reservation for Chicago in here. So what you see here is, uh, uh, is two, two systems, uh, Cisco WAE and, and uh, server. Cisco WAE has a view of the network, view of the network topology, view of the network traffic. Server has a view of all the data centers, view of the data center capacity, and a view of the workloads deployed. And they are basically, you know, we've used the understanding of those in real time to process a decision around where we should place this service. Okay. Now, a any questions on that before I touch on a couple more points? No, okay. Um, or one more point. Now, 
when we were, those optimization policies have quite a big impact. So if you wanted to minimize latency, that will, have a no, that, that will mean it won't be so optimal for some of the other characteristics. So if I minimize latency, I might end up with by putting more traffic in one place, and so I'll increase my network utilization. And so, so selection of optimization policies is, is, is pretty important. If you choose optimization policies that make effective use of the network capacity, they can actually have quite a significant difference. So you see here that this is random placement, just arbitrarily choosing. And this is kind of, you know, I guess what the default behavior today would be, because you're arbitrarily choosing where you place a service. This, uh, this selection criteria here is using a, 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 a weighted algorithm to distribute traffic between the data centers. Um, this uh, uh, this um, uh, result here is choosing the closest data center to the service. And then this, this result here is choosing the one which makes most efficient use of the network resources. And what we show here is how much network resources are being used by the placement of the same set of workloads in every case. So in each, in each of these cases here, we placed exactly the same set of workloads with exactly the same set of network requirements. We just used a different uh, optimization goal to choose which data center to pick. And you can see that between this, between these, and this result here, the difference is significant. 30% difference in the amount of network resources that are used. So, you know, what this illustrates how important it is to make an intelligent decision about where you place a service, and the same applies for the data center, rather than, you know, making an arbitrary choice. So it helps us do two things. It helps us ensure that we can meet that SLA requirement, and it helps us um, make efficient use of the underlying resources. And in a, in, a, in a world where we're now getting to the point where everything is virtualized, and for everything we have to make a decision, we might as well make a good decision, because the cost of making a bad one could be significant. OK. That was everything I had. We've got, I just want to point out uh, so, so some of the guys that have been working on this. So we've got Riang here, we've got Baton over here, we've got Mike Gorman over here. Um, the, the, if you want to see more details of the demonstration, have a play around yourself, then uh, you can do that on one of the booths over here afterwards. And we'll all be hanging around, so happy to take, um, happy to take any questions about any of this. Okay. Thank you very much.